talk about and discuss um, these are all part of the Taurus lineup um, it, something about the Taurus lineup and we'll talk a little bit more about this as we go to each gun um, but just the way that they're designed and that they look um, price wise too the reason why we've been drawn to them and have collected them that doesn't mean that we're not going to pursue other revolvers uh, in the future if the opportunity presents itself. I know right now in the gun market, there is a lot of price gouging, uh, inflation, and prices are a lot higher. So we're always searching for you know, good deals. If we come across good deals, we pick them up. So everything on this table was either a good deal or a rare find or both. So, Hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, hopefully it won't bore you too much. If you guys like this, uh, we're gonna take them out and test them all out and do individual tests, let you see the difference from one another, talk about different things. Um, if there's something that we missed that you would like us to talk about or do, uh, drop it down below in the comments. Also, I'm not a professional, I'm just a gun enthusiast. Uh, I don't. No firearm sales, nothing of that nature. Um, just in here putting up content and helping promote the 2A community. So, let's dive right into it. Our selection of rounds that we're going to have, we'll start off talking about ones that we have chambered in 38 Special. Uh, we have a couple more in 357. Now, we're not going to be shooting any in this video. Uh, we will future uh, do a comparison of every one of them that we have here. This is the 44 mag and the 454 Casol. I pronounced that right. Yeah. So we'll do a size comparison of them, and when we do in uh, future videos, we'll put them up there and see which ones which. Talk about our grain, what we got going on. So from left to right. 38 Special, 357, 44 Mag, and 454. All right, so before we get started on this, I will say that all of our firearms are unloaded, practicing our gun safety. Um, first up on the chopping block, we have the Taurus 856 chambered and 38 Special. Now, on this one, on this particular model that I picked up, it's hammerless. The hammer's been shaved off of it, come like that, uh, originally from factory. So there's no instance or issues that you may get something caught. It's a double action. So it's a very, say, handy pocket gun. I know a lot of people recommend that you always keep them in a holster. 
Uh, if you have a holster for them, you can keep them tucked, concealed. I know whenever we do some off-roading stuff or we go somewhere, I'm wearing bibbed overalls. Something like this will point very, very well into the pockets, say of your overalls or your individual pockets. It's something to keep on you that's um, safe. You know, it's just in case you get out, you're in the wild, you got something that attacks you or maybe something, uh, someone or something like that. It's very perfect. Actually, this would fit say a uh, female's hand a little bit better. I know that they make different grips. I know for me personally, talking about this one, if we do a shooting video, I'll talk about it, how it feels um, as far as the grip, um, how your hand grips on it whenever you fire it. Um, it's not a bad little gun. It doesn't have a whole lot of kick to it. It's a pretty short barrel. Um, I did bring a tape measure We'll just go ahead and measure this one out. Um, I know on the website they have a lot of information. I don't have stuff brought up. But on this one right here, your barrel is just a little bit over two inches. Um, overall length of the revolver, you'd say you're probably around seven inches from the end of the barrel to the back of the handle. And then width-wise, you're right around four and a quarter. So it's a very handy uh, you know, grab and go, go to the gas station, something. It's, it's very good for concealed. I think preferably uh, as a standpoint, this would be a good one for uh, female individuals. So we'll put this one off to the side. Uh, just to say, if there's any, if you have questions, drop them down in the comment about, you know, something about this one or this one or this one or this one or something. We can make, if it's something that it's cool for us to address, then we can make an individual video on it and talk about it some more. So, moving forward, this is the Taurus Tracker. Unloaded. This is the Taurus Tracker 627 chambered in 357. So this one is a uh, more comfortable. It's a little bit heavier, a little bit longer barrel. Obviously, 357. It's a bigger round. The hammer's not shaved on it, so it gives you that ability that you can pull it back. You can cock it. Um, still double action. Uh, one of the cool things about the Taurus Tracker, uh, the Raging Hunter and the Raging Bull, is as you can see, their barrels are ported. So when we do a shooting video, we'll show you how that affects. If we can get a hold of a, another revolver that is not ported, we will show you the difference. I know speaking from experience with the 44 mag, uh, shooting my 44 mag and shooting someone else's 44 mag, like a, I think it was a Smith & Wesson revolver, the ported barrels eliminate the kick, like the recoil, the initial pushback a lot. And if you know, say you can feel it in your wrist or your forearms and stuff. You can shoot these things a lot compared to some of the other ones. And you don't have that much recoil kickback as far as, you know, tiring out your arm. You can go round for round for round. Um, and, and again, something like that maybe is up depending on the person, their forearm strength, their hand strength. But anyways, back to the gun. So this revolver, this is a very comfortable revolver. This would be something I don't necessarily feel like I ever wear anything that's got a pocket big enough, uh, a holster. You could con probably conceal carry this. Big problem I would see about conceal carry is getting stuck on the sights. You know, something getting hung on the sights or getting your hammer caught. I could probably have the hammer shaved, but I don't really want to. All these are for fun. I don't really carry any of these. I don't see any uh, necessary point at this point in time that I would want to carry any of these uh, unless I'm just you know want to display it um, compared to all of the compact and maybe something that holds more rounds so moving forward to the next one the Raging Hunters so these are really really cool I've been enthusiastic about them uh, since I first seen them it's unloaded the Raging Hunter. Now these are a little bit heavier, um, but they come with Picatinny rails. I've seen people mount scopes and stuff on them. They do have sights. You come with the covers to, uh, to put over the sights. Comes like that out of the box. 
We would do an unboxing video of these, but there's nothing special about them being in the box. Uh, just, they don't give you like, you know, some big ooh, ah, wow thing in the box. Like the gun, that's what you're buying it for. Um, adjustable sights, not sure if I said that or not. Uh, the Picatinny rail, I would like to pick up a scope for one of these, or maybe both of them, and test them out, you know, because I think they look really cool. They look pretty badass. This is the, the, one of the many 357 models that they have, and this one is longer. This is the only one that I could find locally so far uh, at a good price, and it was a longer barrel. You know, I don't feel like you need a 357 that, this long as a barrel, but this, you know, a mantle gun or something to put up, this would be pretty cool. To build a new house, have something that, you know, I could take my firearms and mount them up on the wall. That's what this would be. So real quick, I'll measure out the um, the barrel of this one, and I'll measure the barrel out of the 357 tracker. So on the tracker, your barrel length is right a little bit over four inches. Uh, just slightly over four inches. Uh, your overall length of the gun is about nine and three quarters. And then your overall width is uh, about five and three quarters. As far as your Raging Hunter, your barrel length is eight and a half inches. And then your overall length of the firearm is about 15 inches. Uh, Width-wise, we're right around six and a half, a little bit less. That's going past the sights. One thing that would be really cool that I've seen out there is the um, the the holsters, the leather holsters that they make for these, like the chest holsters. Would be pretty cool to get in contact with somebody and get some custom ones made. Those would be awesome to have. Um, as far as, you know, if we're going out shooting or maybe hunting or something, this, you know, it's a pretty good backup gun. Uh, you run into something that needs to be put down pretty quick and, I don't know, you're in a scenario. That's what would be cool, uh, useful, more than cool, I guess. So next up, we'll talk about the Raging Hunter 44 Mag. Now, this is one of the first ones that I bought uh, as far as... Um, the Raging Hunter series. I'm looking for more, but I'm not going to pay outrageous pricing for them whenever, you know, other places have them priced for normal price. I know some of these are going for twice as much as what you're normally going to find them. I don't remember right offhand quote of what I got this one for. I think it was under $800. I think it might have been five or six, but I know these are going for as well as like 1200 plus right now. They do, just like uh, the other Raging Hunters, they do come in a variety, uh, longer barrels and such, but these have been the ones that we've been able to find thus far. Um, real quick, unloaded, no rounds in the chamber. Uh, this actually is a very comfortable gun. This is one that I have shot and had the noticeable difference of knowing that the ported barrel really does something. Picatinny rail would be really cool. Um, same thing as the other one, the hammer. I don't feel like it would be the greatest carry gun, say from your side or something like that. That's where the chest holsters would come into play. Uh, could get caught up on your shirt if you wear loose clothing. I don't feel like you do a very good job concealing this in the spring, summer, fall, unless you wear a lot of clothing and it's cold outside and you can deal with that. Uh, for me, uh, it wouldn't be a concealed carry. I would open carry this. I have my permits to carry and have. So we'll measure this one out. Um, this one is one of my favorites. I guess something that I should touch base on is how many rounds each one holds. Uh, the barrel on this one is about right at right under seven inches. Overall length of the firearm is about 13 and a quarter, 13 and a half, um, about six and a quarter inches long way or uh, width wise. Um, this one, rounds wise, this one holds six rounds. Uh, it's a 44 mag. This one holds 
seven rounds in a 357 and raising hunter. I think this one is the same. Uh, yep, this one holds seven. And then the 38 special holds six. That's one of the downfalls about a revolver, but the cool part, uh, I've always liked growing up uh, liking revolvers for the way revolvers are and the really, you know, uh, the aspect of them looking cool, Wild Wild West stuff, you know, makes revolvers fun. Uh, the capacity, uh, accessibility of quickly, uh, say, dumping your shells and putting new rounds back in is not the same as, say, uh, you know, a regular pistol. And there probably is people out there that's like competition shooters that are like, you know, got speed loaders and stuff like that are really good. But from a normal person's aspect, it just doesn't seem, I don't know, I wouldn't want to be speed loading these. And if I miss six shots with a 44 mag, then I don't, I don't know. That'd be, a, that'd be a hard one to stomach and be like, well, how many shots did you take? 12? Well, how many hit? Like one? You know, that would be, that would be an odd one. So... The last piece of this one. Now this one is a pretty heavy, and if you don't know what a 454 Casol is, you need to check it out. Unloaded, um, the Raging Bull. Well, I have shot this Johnny right here firsthand, and this is a damn man's round. This shit right here. If you're not holding on to it, the ported barrel helps. But if you are not holding on to this thing, you will crack you right in the chicken. Uh, I think 44 mag without a port of barrel has a, a good amount of kick, depending on what, what it comes out of. But whenever you start getting into like the 454, the 460, the 500 magnums, if you ain't got it in your hands, your wrists, and your forearms, then you're going to get cracked in the chicken. But... You let one of these babies sing, and freedom is fucking on. Oh. I think we've been to the gun range with this one a couple times, and we shot it. And uh, when he, when uh, Dustin shot it, the dude that was standing beside me about hit his head on the top of the the awning. It, it went off, and it, it catches people. It catches people off guard. It's not a quiet round. I don't think you'd be able to make this quiet. But. 454, five round capacity. Um, same thing as uh, basically, I would say this is an in between between the Tracker and the Raging Hunter. Doesn't have a Picatinny rail or anything like that. Still has your, you know, your ported barrel. It's a bigger size frame. This one's steel, right? Stainless. Stainless. Black so this, stainless. This one's stainless. Um, they do make these in titanium, right? Yes, they do. Yeah. Good luck finding those. If I find any of these in titanium, I will be all up over them because they. Uh, this once you start getting up to the 44 mag and going up, and they get a little bit heavier. Now I do know that I've seen these. They've made them in. Um, what was that one I found? Two inch or four inch? Two inch. Two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half inch barrel. Two and a half inch barrel. That would be fun to have, but not fun to shoot. No ports. No no ports. Like this one right here, we'll measure this barrel out. Uh, we're right at about six and a half inches. And honestly, as short as this thing is, or uh, the, the length of this one is about dead perfect or the minimum that I would want personally. Um, I'm sure there's people out there, you know, it's got grizzly hands and a big cornbread fed motherfucker. It's like, you know, grab that and be like, oh yeah, I'm good. Well, <laughs> that ain't me. So, I would like to have one. I'd like to try it, but that's, this is a hell of a gun to handle. And like I said, if you guys, uh, drop something down in the comments if you guys want to see a comparison, you know, between all these or which ones that you want to see a comparison, uh, always an enthusiast always a collector so if i collect something else we can throw it in there we can do a video on stuff i like doing these things and the people that watch them hope that you enjoy them so like i said if you want to touch but if you want to uh want anything for us to touch base about with these go into a little bit more detail we will do our best we'll put some new videos and stuff up um basically that's the end of it uh i don't 
I didn't do the overall length, I don't believe, of this one. Um, so you're roughly uh, about 13 and a quarter lengthwise and about six and a quarter from here to here. Um, these are all size comparison. Uh, weight wise, I don't have a scale. I know I do have a scale somewhere, but I don't have it on me. This one right here definitely weighs the most. Um, this one, just picking up. This one's a little bit longer than this one. So the 357 weighs, will come in second, and then this one. These have a good bit of weight on them. Like the, you know, the Tracker, compared to the Raging Hunter, I feel like this one weighs more than this 44. So we can do a, we can do a scale test and see which one weighs, uh, you know, a difference. It's probably the, the material that they're made out of. Uh, if these are more directed towards hunting, then of course, you know, they're gonna make them a little bit lighter for people to carry, so. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, like, subscribe, comment, dislike, don't share, share, whatever you wanna do. There is a merch link down below. Uh, it's not anything to do with firearm sales. We do not sell firearms, um, but we do promote the 2A community, especially here in Tennessee. So, peace out, guys. I'll see you on the next one.